What's up guys, Dennis here, and this is the best knife sharpener I have ever used. And you can make it yourself. It's really easy, let me show you how I did it. First of all, let me show you what I have been using to sharpen my knives. This is the Spyderco Sharp Maker, and uh, this used to be the best knife sharpener I've ever had. Once it's all set up, you pass a knife down these ceramic honing blocks, I guess. This takes really long though. And although it's a pretty fine ceramic, even better is if you use a strop, which is basically just a piece of leather. I like to use this. This is FlexCut Gold. Uh, FlexCut's a company that makes wood carving tools, and they recommend sharpening their tools only with this and a strop. And I found that it works really well. The tricky part about this is getting this angle right of the blade against the strop. And then you have to have a perfectly straight motion like this, but in reality your blade's going to kind of wobble a little bit as you, as you go. But wouldn't it be great if this could just move and you could hold the knife blade perfectly straight? So my first idea was to make a belt out of leather and make sort of like a sander. And in fact, I think they sell stuff like that. I think you can buy a leather belt that'll go on a sanding machine. And although it'll be a little bit fast, it still does about the same thing that I'm mentioning. Basically, the strop will move and the knife stays still. One other idea would be to glue the leather to the outside of a wheel that's turning and sharpen the blade that way. Now, I don't like concave grinds on knife blades. That's just a personal preference. But with a large enough wheel, that'll kind of be negligible. And with a leather surface on the outside, the leather will give somewhat and actually create a convex edge on the tip of, on the edge of the knife, which is the kind of edge that I prefer for most of the things I use knives for. I just need to make a big enough wheel, wrap it in leather, and turn it slow enough. Luckily, I just built a machine that turns slow. So let's get started. Okay, yeah, this looks a little bit ridiculous, but uh, my kids were in the garage, and so I couldn't break out the power tools. Otherwise, I would have used a circular saw. But anyway, this worked. I cut down a sheet of half-inch MDF, and then trimmed it down on the table saw to two pieces that were 15 inches square. I wanted a one-inch thick wheel, so I glued these two together. The board was actually pretty warped, so I used the table saw top to make them nice and true. I put a bunch of weight on it as the glue dried overnight. A lot of weight, actually. Then I just measured to find the center of the square and drilled a hole. This will be where I mount the wheel to the machine that I built. I'm going to use this center as a reference and use a string to draw a circle. Honestly, there's I could have done better here. Um, it wasn't a very true circle. My idea, though, was that I could just cut a rough circle on the bandsaw, and then I'd be able to clean it up later on the machine itself, using it as like almost like a wood lathe, and then it would be perfectly true. In hindsight, I wish I spent a little bit more time on this step, getting it a little bit close to a perfect circle. When it came time to lay it down, it was a little bit more work than I expected. If you haven't seen the video where I built this machine, click the card above or check out the link in the description. I actually made it for turning down cymbals, like for a drum set. Yep, no, that's, that's not going to work. There's a hole in the back plate, and I wanted to put a screw through, not only to index the wheel so I'd be able to put it on the same orientation every time, but also kind of keep it from spinning. So I just marked it and, and drilled it, and then, what am I doing? I just tried that, and it didn't work. Yeah, there we go. Ooh. 
Okay, so I'm putting the steady rest back uh, to use this as like a lathe. And it's really not true at all. Uh, like I said, I could have done better making it a better circle. But also, the mounting point in the center there, if you look really closely, it's not the exact center anyway. I thought I could get away with using an old wood chisel to do this, but the cutting geometry was horrible, and it was way too short. You can see it moving my hand all over the place. I tried this for a lot longer than I should have before I gave up. It was really just mashing the wood fibers. There we go. So now I got the tool that I actually made for turning the symbols, and I was surprised this worked as well as it did on the wood. Of course, this is MDF. It's not real wood, but the cut was much better. It still didn't look great, but you can't see that on the camera. There was a low spot on the wheel that took a long time to get to, and there was an interrupted cut that was making it really hard. Once I finally got it all down to the same level, it cut pretty well. The finish still wasn't great though, and I had some ridges left, so I used some 80 grit sandpaper just to kind of smooth everything out. It didn't have to be smooth really, but it did have to be flat. So I'm going to cut the belt from vegetable tanned leather, and this is a hide that I've had for years. I got it a few years ago for leather working and still haven't used it all up. Okay, this is not the way to cut leather. I don't know why, but I always try this first before I remember it doesn't work very well. You can get through it, but it's a lot of effort and you're going to have to make several passes. The way to cut leather is this way, with the knife facing towards you while you pull the leather away and pull the knife towards you. It looks more difficult than it is. I'm just trying to stay on the line. And really, that's not a great method either. You should draw two lines and try to cut in between the two lines. Here I decided to go on the side of the line and I started getting a little bit faster at that. So I'm just going to cut out a second piece here and I'll splice them together next. Now to get out the leather tools. I'm going to use what's called a safety beveler. Yep, yep, don't need any of that. This tool basically shaves leather to make it thinner. And you could put a bevel on the edge of, a, of leather for, well, exactly this. This one's been used quite a bit, so it's a little bit dull. I could probably use a new one. So what I'm doing is beveling both sides of the leather, and then I'm going to glue them together. So here I'm just feeling to make sure that with them beveled together like that, that they're pretty even thickness across. And the best glue for leather is contact cement or rubber cement. coffee break. The alignment doesn't have to be super great here. Uh, leather will bend, of course, but I used a ruler just to kind of make them pretty straight. There was a little bit of a bump when I was done, so I just took a little material from the back using the beveler. And now to glue it onto the wheel.
First though, I want to bevel the starting piece here. Um, because this will get glued down first. And then the other side of the belt will wrap over it. Okay, so here's where I got really confused about which way to glue the belt on. I wanted it so that when the wheel is turning, the knife wouldn't catch the joint where the leather is joined together, if that makes any sense. I thought it'd be a good idea to stand it up and kind of roll the belt on this way, but that was not a good idea. It's really hard to keep it aligned, so don't do that. It's much easier just to leave it on the table and just kind of wrap it around. And here I am rolling it again for some reason. You don't have to do that. Here's where I made a big mistake. I glued it all the way up to the end and then I didn't give myself much space to get the beveler in there and make a good bevel. So this joint wasn't really the best. You might even be able to see there's a bit of a, a bulge right there at the end. Here I am rolling it again on the table like that did anything at all. It, it did not. But anyway, we're pretty much finished. All right, so let's see how it works. There are a few bumps here, uh, especially where the, the leather is, was uh, spliced together. And I think we can kind of bang those out. Now to try it out, I'm gonna use my Boker Arbolito, which is a, it's a really nice knife. It has a good edge on it, but I want to see if I can polish the sides a little bit more. As you can see, they're, they're not bad at all, but I think we can get them even more polished. Oh yeah. Wow, look at that. And that was just uh, a few seconds. And it's not even, it's just barely warm. That's awesome. All right, so now I wanna try sharpening my, my daily carry, this Spyderco knife, which, uh, Okay, it still cuts, but it's uh, it needs some love. It hasn't been sharpening in a while. So let's give it a quick pass here.
Now I'm sharpening without a guide and uh, I have no idea if that was the right angle or not. I just kind of winged it, but let's see if it did anything. <laughs> oh man, that, this is VG10 steel. This is not the easiest steel to sharpen, but that was, I've never gotten it this sharp, this quickly. I'm super excited. This would look better with phone book uh, or newspaper, but I, I can just feel the difference. This is awesome. All right, well, I'm super happy with how this turned out. I hope you guys like this little project. If you make one yourselves, please let me know. If you have any ideas for improvements or questions or anything, feel free to leave them in the comments. And if you like this sort of stuff, you might want to subscribe and click the bell to get notified when I put out new videos. All right, thanks for watching, guys, and we'll see you next time. Buddy, what are you doing? Of course. All right. You got your got your drill, I see.